Hi, this is Vasily from At Home. Let's work out few downstream and upstream problems. So this is where we normally get a bit confused. Actually, there's nothing much hard in it if we are clear like what we are doing. Okay, so shall we shall do two problems on this to make the concept clear. Okay, so in the first problem it says Ritu can row downstream 20 kilometers in two hours and upstream 4 kilometers in 2 hours, right? So, distance is given. Okay, the time taken is given. You need to find, find her speed of rowing in still water and the speed of the current. Let the speed of the boat in still water be x kilometers, understood? Kilometers per hour. So, this is the speed, this is the assumption we are doing. The speed of the boat in still water is x kilometers per hour. And the, the speed of the stream is by kilometer. The flow, the current is by kilometers per hour. Okay. And now in that case, the speed of the boat downstream will be like, you know, the stream will be flowing in, the, in one direction and the boat is also moving towards the same direction. So that would be the speed would be x plus y. Okay kilometers per hour because they are they both are moving in the same direction so there's no the flow is smooth okay and here the next assumption is the speed of boat upstream uh, you're rowing against the tide right the stream flows down and you are rowing opposite direction so what happens this is x minus y kilometers per hour so, if your assumptions, these assumptions are fine, then the problems, rest of the problem is very easy. Okay. After this, we also know that the time equals distance over speed. Right. Yeah. So, let's come to the problem now. So, till here, it is all assumptions we have made because we need to put that into an equation, right, to solve. So, I've just assumed all this. Now, let's come back to the question. Ritu can row downstream 20 kilometers in 2 hours. So this formula I am using and the time taken is 2 hours and the distance covered is 20 kilometers. The speed, okay, this is downstream so you take that is x plus y, okay. So the first equation says 20 kilometers, this distance divided by the speed here. The speed of the boat downstream is x plus y, right? x plus y equals 2. So, this is a simple equation. So, with this, let me frame one equation, okay? So, what do I do? Multiplying throughout by x plus y. Just to get rid of the denominator, I am multiplying throughout both my left side and the right side by x plus y. So, I'll be left with 20 here and here it would be 2 times x plus y, right? So, I got my equation. Let me make it clear. So, this is 2x plus 2y equals 20, okay? If you want, you can simplify and you can make it like dividing throughout by 2. I can simplify the because all are the, fa the common factor is 2. So I just divide by the common factor and I get x plus y equals 10. Okay, this is my first equation. So do the same with the second equation also. What do they say in the second uh, half of the problem? She can row upstream 4 kilometers in 2 hours. So normally your speed is less when you uh, row upstream okay because you're going against the flow of the river so your speed is less i mean the distance covered will be less so here it is four kilometers okay so let me frame that also four kilometers divided by and this is upstream upstream is x minus y remember that upstream is the x minus y and she takes the same time that is two hours for four kilometers so now again multiply throughout by x minus y this time to get rid of the denominator. Okay, 
So on your left, your x minus y gets cancelled and you're left with 4. And on to your right side, it is 2 times x minus y. So that would be like 2x minus 2y equals 4, right? Divide throughout by 2 and make it, bring it down to the simple form. So that is x minus y equals 2. So this is your second equation. Yeah, here we got two pair of linear, a pair of linear equation, right? You've got two linear equations. Now let's solve them. So equation 1 I can write as it is because your y is same and with opposite sign. So we can directly cancel them. So x plus y equals 10. Take and you add the second equation x minus y equals 2. So what do we get? The y terms gets cancelled and you get 2x equals 12. And so your x is equal to 6. Okay. So this is your x and this is 6. Now mm, you can calculate the y too. So y, I just put this in the equation 1 and get what is y substituting x in equation 1 okay so what happens i get 6 plus y equals 10 you get your y as 4 so what is this x and y it is speed of the boat in still water so let us write that here therefore the speed of the boat in still water still water is your x that is what we assumed is equal to x which is nothing but 6 kilometers per hour and here what is your y your y is the speed of the stream or the speed of the current so we got that too speed of the current or speed whatever you call it as current is equal to y which is what is your y? Yeah, 4 kilometers per hour. This is your answer. Isn't that easy? So let's go on to the next type of similar question. Okay. Here a boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and 44 kilometers downstream in 10 hours. And in 13 hours it can go 40 kilometers upstream and 55 kilometers downstream. So you can clearly see the two equations given there, right? You have to find the speed of the stream and that of the boat in still water. So again, I've assumed the same as we did for the previous problem. Now let's make the equation, right? So here they say, a boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and the downstream. So they've given you the uh, distance traveled upstream and the downstream. Let us do that. Let us put that in equation. So you have 30 kilometers upstream. How do you write that? Distance is 30 divided by upstream is x minus y. Okay. So x minus y. And so add. 44 kilometers downstream so that is x plus y okay is equal to 10 hours the time taken is 10 hours similarly the next statement says upstream 4 km, 40 kilometers so that is 40 divided by 40 over x minus y right because that's upstream and 55 kilometers downstream so that is 55 over x plus 5 for this uh, the boat takes 13 hours so you have got the equation 1 here and equation 2 here you find uh, the denominators uh, a bit complicated you have both the variables here right x and y to make this easy i would assume let this is the second assumption I am making. Let 1 over x minus y be p and 
1 over x plus y b cube. Okay. Just to make the equation simple. So that you can solve it in no time. So you can rewrite the equation 1 and 2 again now. Now it is 30p, right? 30 over x minus y is 30p because we have taken 1 over x minus y as p plus 44q. Did you get that? Equals 10. So let's make this as your first equation. Okay, the new first equation. And the second equation is 40p plus 55q equals 13 as your second equation. In this problem, I am going to use cross multiplication method because the numbers seem to be too big. So I think cross multiplication method would help. Okay. So we have learned the cross multiplication method previously. Just do that. So you put your P here. Okay. When you write the P here, you would write the coefficient of Q first. So you get 44 and 55. Okay. This side you would write the coefficient of the constant. I mean the constant terms. So that is going to be minus 10. Because the 10 is on the other side. So when you make it in the general form. It comes to the right left side. Right. So it is minus 10. Okay. Minus 10 and minus 13. Equal to Q O and under that. You write, the co you write the constant term first. So that's minus 10 and minus 13. And then you would write the coefficient of P term, right? So that is 30 over uh, 40. Yeah. Okay. Equals the constant 1. So that will be like coefficient of the P and Q. So coefficient of P is 30 and 40. And this side the coefficient of Q is 44 and 55. Is that okay? Now we need to cross multiply. Right? Cross multiply and subtract these two. So in the next equation, I mean in the next statement you would get P over, I'd, see it is 44. Don't get confused with the signs. See that you use the proper sign here. Minus 55 times minus 10. So do the same for the rest. For Q again it is minus 10 times 40 minus minus 13 times 30. And this is equal to 1 over 30 times 55 minus 40 times 44. Understood? I just cross multiplied. No confusion here. You are just cross multiplying and subtracting. Okay? And see that you put the right sign here. Because that is where you normally go wrong. And now what happens? Let me multiply. Let me find the difference. Like you know. This will be P divided by. When I multiply these two, I get minus 572. Okay, 572. And here this minus and minus will become plus 550 equals Q divided by, this is minus 400. Here the minus and minus will become plus and this is 390. Okay. Normal multiplication and be careful with the sign. That's all. So here again when you multiply 30 times 55 that will give you 1650 and here it is minus 1760. Okay. You have done, you've, you've done this much. So in the next let's subtract and put the values. So your P over minus 22 right equals Q divided by Again, here too it is minus 10 equals here it is minus 1 over my 100 and 
it is minus right here minus 110 now i will equate the p with this okay so p by negative 22 equals to 1 over 110 will give you the value p equals minus 22 over minus 110 okay please don't forget the signs so the minus sign will get cancelled and 22 would go here 1 over 5 times so let's do the q2 and uh, since you have got the p value you have already assumed this implies 1 over x minus y equals 5 right because your p is what have you assumed your p as 1 over x minus y so i just wrote that here yeah this is 1 over 5 okay sorry not 5 it's 1 over 5 so i get the equation x minus y equals 5 okay so that is equation 3 i make it equation 3 now okay fine likewise let's do the q2 so q over minus 10 is equal to 1 over minus 110 right so this implies your q is equal to minus 10 over minus 110 here the zeros will get cancelled and the negative sign will get cancelled so that implies your q was 1 over x plus y that was your assumption so i'm replacing the q with that is equal to 1 over 11 so that shows x plus y equals 11 okay so that's equation 4 now you are back to x and y solve these two equations the third and the fourth equation and get the value of x and y okay so now adding 3 and 4 what happens so that is x minus y equals 5 and x plus y equals 11 so that will give you the y will get cancelled right so your 2x equals 16 and your x is 8 okay now substitute x in equation 3 you get 8 take away y equals 5 that implies your y equals 3 so you got your x and y and we have already assumed what is the x and y right just go back and see what is your x your assumption was the speed of the boat in still water is x right and the question is also that determine you have to determine the speed of the stream and the speed of the boat in the still water. So you got the speed of the boat in still water as your x. So x is equal to speed of the boat in still water. Okay. Equals you got your x as 8. So that is 8 kilometers per hour. And your y is the speed of the stream or the current, okay? Is equal to, your y is 3, so that is 3 kilometers an hour, okay? And that's your answer. You're done with your answer. So, don't you find them easy? Only the assumption part, you have to be a bit careful. See what you are assuming and then while doing, you just put that on the problem, whatever is given. And then while solving, all that you need to be careful is with the signs, okay. And stick on to the basic rules and you get the answer in no time. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.